afternoon call the Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016, Manistee City Council meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shall we please take the rolls? Mayor Kenny. Here. Councilmember Beaton. Here. Councilmember Zelensky. Here. Councilmember Goodspeed. Here. Councilmember Smith. Here. Councilmember Whitlow. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. Finance Director. Here. Public Safety Director. Here. And City Engineer. Here. Thank you. And Mayor Pro Tem Gusted has a work um, conflict tonight, so he's unable to make it. Um, public hearings, we have none. Citizen comments and agenda related items. Is there anybody in attendance who would like to comment on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. All agenda items marked with an asterisk on the consent agenda considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to the approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Consent agenda items include approval of minutes, cash balances, quarterly financial update, quarterly investment update, notification regarding next work session, consideration of authorizing the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, and consideration of the world of arts and crafts use of Red Samaritan Park. I'll make a motion that council take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Goodspeed, supported by Council Member Zelensky, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any further discussion? So now we please take the roll. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Zelensky? Yes. Council Member Goodspeed? <coughs> yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Whitland? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Unfinished business, we have none. New business. Consideration providing staff with additional direction on proposed deer call. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has identified one parcel of land as the only available location suitable for harvesting deer in the city. USDA representatives estimate 10 to 15 deer could be harvested over a three-day period in good conditions. Staff is requesting additional direction from council on the continued feasibility of the proposed deer call. Is there a motion to take action to provide additional direction? I'll make a motion to take action. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Smith, supported by Councilmember Whitliff, to take action to provide additional direction to staff in the proposed air call. Is there any comments? Comments. Mm -hmm. I know uh, the, the estimates that have, have been made on the available property, uh, in my opinion, would not justify the expense uh, or bring about the results that, that we would need uh, in managing the deer population. I spoke with um, past president and current president at uh, Manistee Golf and Country Club and with the course superintendent um, about that property. Uh, the report indicated that in the past the uh, Country Club has not been receptive to uh, use of their property uh, for deer hunting or deer management. The uh, superintendent um, also serves on the board uh, and, and expressed reservations about that and, and indicated that he would recommend to the board that the property not be made available. Um, I have requested it to be put on the agenda for their uh, February 15th meeting as a formality to, uh, to take a vote, see where they stand on that. But I would anticipate uh, as a former board member out there that the, the full board would support the superintendent's uh, recommendation to, uh, to not permit it. So that takes a large piece of property out that, uh, that could have uh, had an impact on it. Um, I love the report, you know, the attachments and the, and the uh, agenda were pretty comprehensive. Um, so I'm just uh, just not sure it would be effective at this point. Well with the my comment on it is 10 to 15 deer if there are out of the 15 five bucks 
10 does, you're still going to be taking out, I figure two does, or uh, two babies per doe, you're still taking out 30 deer. And that's going to, uh, that's going to help with the deer population in the city. Even if we could do it on the north side also and take about the same, there's, there's about our 50 deer. <clears throat> It's my understanding though they couldn't identify anything on the north side. Is that not correct? Chief? I'm sorry, I didn't get a question. It's my understanding that USDA couldn't find anything on the north side that would have been suitable. Is that not correct? Or You're asking me, did they find, did they find in, in, I, I'm just off of Councilman Willis' comment. I'm just curious: Is there any place on the north side where they could be baiting? At? I'm sorry, on the north oh, side. Yes. The, well, the industrial park, perhaps, but we didn't investigate the north side because it was pretty clear in the discussions that the north side deer population wasn't really an issue. Um, so all the discussion we had was <coughs> on, on the um, the south side, southwest, prominent, predominantly. I don't know of any area on the north side that, now they know what their parameters are, mm -hmm. I don't know of any area on the north side that would meet their needs either. Just thinking off the top of my head. Does that help, Martin? Well, it does. I, do, I mean, I live on yeah. the north side and I haven't seen a lot of deer in the last I, I, year and a half. Going back and forth in between <coughs> our uh, Harbor Village, I see deer all the time. They're uh, a grouping of 17 deer uh, up by the Aztec Oil. Um, facility this morning. Um, I think if we still take the, the 10 deer out, multiply it by <coughs> 2, we're still, still taking out 30 deer off the south side. So it, it, it's going to help. And then we can make judgments for next year too. As far as direction, <coughs> I, I I can speak now. I, I talked with <coughs> Mr. Adam from. I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought I had shut it off. I talked with Mr. Adam from uh, USDA Wildlife Division. He is. Um, He does not feel that a call would be productive at all. Um, he did not refuse to come here and do that, but he said it was not cost effective to do it. Um, and we talked about it in some length about what Mr. Bachman put in writing. Um, I, if there's one chance in 500 million that somebody could get hurt, I can't support it. <coughs> I just couldn't do that. Okay, then can we use the city police as, as we planned for last year? Uh, the insurance would not cover if something should happen. Uh, they specifically said they do not want, would not want to see our police officers doing the call. Who's they? The disability. Disability won't. Do how, did we, how did we do that last year then? That it was okay. Before before it was overturned. It was probably going to be okay until the, the state of Michigan weighed in on the Department of Agriculture weighed in on When the Department of Agriculture came here, who we deemed to be professional shooters and experienced shooters, and they looked at that property and said, not say we will not shoot here. And then the city manager asked me, would I have police officers shoot there? I was reluctant, and we contacted the municipal league and asked their opinion that they cover our liability if, in fact, the council directed the city police to do that. And the municipal league flat out said they will accept no liability for additional work a police officer to shoot deer. And Mr. Sperry, who was our loss management person, specifically said city police should not be calling deer. I believe they referred to it as gross negligence if we did that in the letter. What it said was it sets us up for gross negligence if something happens. But if we know it's unsafe, if we do something and something bad happens, then we could be sued for gross negligence because that we've already established it's probably not a safe place to do it. So the, our insurance carrier said, 
they would accept no liability for us to do that if, in fact, something went wrong. And in the information that you provided, did I read correctly that in the other communities where there was a deer call, the USDA had approved those sites that those communities had worked with the USDA and that's why the municipal league was? I, I believe there might be a little bit of an extrapolation there because there are communities that use the USDA to shoot and the DNR. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably some communities who use the DNR and not the UFDA and still had the ability to shoot and didn't realize that maybe they weren't safe by their standards. The UFDA was not a standard that we used the first time we discussed it. We only used the right, DNR right, standard. Yeah, so there yeah. probably was places that hadn't taken that extra step to determine the, the reasonableness of shooting in those areas. But once we had that information, the municipal league said, we won't cover it. Well, let me throw this out then. Chief, um, tranquilizing a deer and then culling? <clears throat> there are non-lethal that we haven't fully investigated. There is sterilization, there is tranquilizing, and then you can kill a deer once you tranquilize it. That's what um, I was getting at. We have not investigated that. We haven't looked at the cost of that. We haven't looked at the mechanics of that. But that was one of the options that the, the um, ad hoc committee looked at. But didn't recommend it as the most reasonable one, but there are, that is, I suppose, a potential option that we have not looked at, we've not investigated at all, to flesh that out, to see if it's even happening anywhere, if anybody's done that, but there is no way to tranquilize and move deer. If you tranquilize, we'd have to kill the deer. You can't transport them someplace else and right. replace them someplace else. They'll be back. And then there's also a um, sterilization program that is good for two years per deer. And again, we looked at that, but the cost of that was extremely high per deer. No, we, we okay 5000 for the USDA to do it. Um, I guess if we if you could investigate the tranquilization of the deer and then calling them at that point and see if we're in, within budget of that 5000 I don't believe the deer are going to do that. They also want to trap them and move them. They don't. Number one, don't want to spread disease if it was a disease deer. Or two, that stress of trapping them and moving them, they'll die anyway. So, I believe you're talking about tranquilizing and killing them. I don't think they'll let you do that, but I could be wrong. My, what I've read leads me to believe that that's not a, an option. But. We'd, have to, we'd have to go back and re restart looking at this again and see what those options are. That was the direction the city comes. I know the U, USDA Wildlife Division has trapped and dispatched deer in hard to get at areas. I know they've done that. But they don't want to do that. They don't like to do well, that. Certainly not the most efficient way of right. using their time for it. Well, what's, I like Councilman Whitloff's idea about tranquilizing them and culling them <clears throat> uh, because that would certainly lessen the danger Dramatically, I would think. It would change the dynamics significantly if we were able to if we were able to do that and have the equipment to do that. I just haven't got that information for the city council right. to say what's available where it's available at. I don't know who does that. I don't know if the Department of Agriculture will do that. There wasn't a discussion we ever had with them, it wasn't even on the table. Mm -hmm. um. I prefer to continue to look at the non-lethal methods, um, finding ways to tear deer, what's been worse, um, what's <coughs> helpful, um, putting something out there on our website, Facebook, that residents can go to, see if there's something out there that they might be able to implement um, before we go down that road. Well, could we um, investigate both, modes, both methods, excuse me? Tranquilization and killing them, and then you're, you know, non-lethal, as you say. Mm -hmm. Rather than having one option, let's let's have more than one option on the table to use. Um, I guess we need a proposal as far as. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What is this? What is our? The direction. Right. I agree. Doesn't matter. They need to go. What was that again? They need to go. Um, so the direction you want to give staff is to look at the cost of 
tranquilizing and then calling the deer. Correct. Because we did approve up to 5,000 for the USDA to do, to do the, uh, the call. And would that need a motion? I would make that motion. I would second it. I have a motion by Councilmember Whitless, supported by Councilmember Beaton, to uh, direct staff to investigate the cost of tranquilizing deer and then calling them. And then you're, you want the non lethal information put on them. Right. So is that an addendum to the motion? Well, I'd like to add to that. I, I think we should just go and proceed and put that, whether no matter what way council decides to go, I, I think that's useful information to have. I think we can just direct staff to, because it should not be a cost, huge cost to put information out on the, okay. All right. the website. And that's, okay. I would like to hear about any other um, methods or any other way that might come up along the way if they come across something else while they're exploring these two things that we talked about. If something else comes up, I'd like to hear about that also. So we need an amendment to the motion then? Or can we just add that? Well, I, I think if Council Member Zelensky is asking for something different than what the motion says, mm -hmm. then I suppose it would be a motion to amend, unless you want to vote on the first one and then address this concern. Another one, okay. I, it's, to make it clear, why don't we just vote on this? Amendment motion. Mm -hmm. Council Member Zelensky? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Whitlock? Yes. Council Member Goodspeed? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? No. Motion approved. All right, now you want a motion to go ahead. We can put the non-lethal methods, on, you know, information out there for citizens on the website and for staff continuing to look at other methods of dealing with the deer. I thought we were going to put on our website, you know, different methods of discouraging deer from being in people's yards and that kind of thing. Is that what you were thinking of or is it more? All part of what residents can do to help deter the deer to stop them from whether it's the type of um, plants that they put in the yard to maybe different things that would help deter the deer. Yeah. That's all part of it. Okay, so do you want a motion along those lines? Along with, I thought we could combine it with, along with having staff investigate other not lethal methods or not lethal methods or whatever. Or I don't think we we should exclude any options. Um, if if we run across a non-legal method that's out there, I think we should hear about it. And it, if they're doing some exploration, they're looking into into different like tranquilizing whatever. They may run across something else that somebody else has done. I think we need to hear. We shouldn't limit ourselves to just that. Is what I'm trying to say. And continue to explore new method methods of. Reading the city of the deer. <laughs> so, was the motion made? Yes. Yeah, someone needs to make a motion. I'll make that motion to uh, to go in um, to explore different non-lethal uh, methods um, for deer call. I'll second it. I have a motion by Councilmember Whitless, supported by Councilmember Beaton, to direct staff to continue investigating ways um, to non-lethal ways of removing the deer from the city. And different methods. And different methods. <laughs> you know that, Michelle? <laughs> what do you say? Any methods? <laughs> Councilmember Whitlock? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. 
Councilmember Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. And Mayor Kinney? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Next we move on to consideration uh, application to boards and commissions. The city clerk has taken action to advertise vacancies on the Board of Review, Compensation Commission, Harbor Commission, Historic District Commission, Parks Commission, Peg Commission, Planning Commission, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. All appointments by the mayor are subject to council approval unless otherwise specified by statute or ordinance. Nominations for council appointments do not require a second. After a member of council nominates an individual for appointment, council shall vote on the nomination. A majority vote in favor of placement in the nominee is required for appointment. The following applications have been received. Board of Review, there was one regular member on expired term. There were no applicants. Compensation Commission, there were two vacancies, no applicants. Harbor Commission had two vacancies or no applicants. Historic District Commission, there are two vacancies, terms ending 2-28-19. Applicants must be a resident, city residents. This is a council appointment. He had two applicants, David L. Carson of 100 Oak Street and J John H. Perschbacher, 423rd Street. I'll make a motion that council appoint David L. Carson of 100 Oak Street and John Perschinger, Perschenbacher of 423rd Street to the non-determining Two twenty-eight nineteen. Second. I think we just vote on these. Um, so we just need a vote on David L. Carson. Okay, Councilmember Beaton. Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Zielinski. Yes. Mayor Kenny. Yes. And Councilmember Whitlock. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. And now we need a vote on. John H. Hirschbarker, who Councilmember Goodspeed nominated. Um, Councilmember Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Whitliff? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Parks Commission, there was one vacancy, no applicants. Pay Commission, there are three vacancies, terms sitting 12 to 31 18. Applicants must be Manistee County residents. This is a council appointment. We did have three applicants. Barry Lynn on 532 Fourth Street, Mike Tolston, 86 Hancock Street, and General Rosniski, 486 First Street. I'll make a motion that we appoint Barry Lynn. No, we don't need that. We just, we we just need a motion and then a vote. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Whitler? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? Yes. Motion approved. I'll make a motion that we nominate our point Daniel Rosneski. Uh, Rosinski? Sorry. Of 46 First Street. 46. Councilmember Whitlow? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? Yes. Motion approved. Are there any other nominations for the third and last vacancy? I'll get it over with. I'll nominate Mike Tilton of 86 Hancock Street. And I'll put that one discussion. Um, I'm nervous, and I'm not attacking Mr. Chilson, but um, I've heard that there's been a lot of negativity, and they seem to go going forward, and I'm afraid, and so I, I just, I don't know how to address this. I'm Mike Chilson. What is the, what is the issue? Negative is good, and I ask that you re that if I that you would respect all the even if you don't like decisions, 
of all the decisions of this commission. And I'll talk to you more in depth later about it if you'd like to. I okay. I don't think I've had any direction from the pay commission. Okay. Okay. Or anybody else. Okay. I, I started out when I came to town. I uh, <clears throat> when I returned to Manistee, State, I uh, went to that flag racing down for Street Beach, and I've been to uh, three or four county commission meetings uh, and uh, other kinds of events that I find interesting. So I've been going, doing quite a bit of stuff. Good. Okay. Chuggy, okay, please go. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Zlinski? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Woodliffe? No. Mayor, oh. <laughs> Mayor Kenny? No. Um, motion approved. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the Planning Commission. There are two vacancies, unexpired terms setting 1031-16 and 1031-17. Applicant must be a city resident. This is mayoral appointment. I'd like to appoint Aaron A. Bennett, uh, 524th Street, to the term ending 1031-17. you need a motion to accept, sir? Yes. I'll make a motion that council approve the mayor's appointment of Aaron A. Bennett to the Expired, expired term of 10, 31, 17. We need support. Support. I have a motion by Councilmember Goodspeed, supported by Councilmember Whitliff, to appoint Aaron Bennett a 524th Street to the Planning Commission term ending 10, 31, 17. Michelle, can you please take the roll? Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Whitliff? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Zielinski? Yes. And Mayor, Mayor Kenny? Yes. <coughs> Motion approved. Thank you. Next, I'd like to appoint Gabriel Walker, 125 Franklin Street, uh, to a vacancy on expired term ending 1031 16. I'll make a motion that we approve the mayor's appointment of Gabriel Walker to the term expiring 1031 16. Second. A motion by Councilmember Goodspeed, supported by Councilmember Whitliff, to appoint Gabriel Walker at 125 Franklin Street to the Planning Commission with a term ending 1031 16. Michelle, can you please take the roll? Councilmember Whitliff? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Zelensky? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. And Councilmember Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. The Zoning Board of Appeals, there was one alternate member but no applicant. All the boards and commissions, and just be a, advertised for the open vacancies. Next, we'll move on to notices, communications, and announcements. A regular part of each council meeting is a report from a cooperating agency, organization, or department. Tonight, we'll hear from. <laughs> Good evening. Matt. Violet, if I can say it. Who will report on activities for public services. Thank you very much. Um, to start with, I'd just like to introduce myself. My name is Matt Violet, and I recently joined Public Services back in September. Uh, my position with the organization is a Municipal Services Manager, and what that is is a fancy word for a coach. Uh, I work with people like Mr. Taylor to help design and tailor your program to meet the needs of the residents. Um, every year we go through this report with you guys, and uh, Mr. Arlen asked me to come this evening and introduce myself and go through it with you. So, We'll just kind of clip through it real quick. This is a report from June the 14th through July the 15th, uh, which is the contract year. Um, next slide, please. Oh, I have a bunch of clicker, don't I? There we go. Uh, basic overview on the company. Republic Service has been in the community since the Harlan Sanitation days, uh, going back 60 years now. Um, in northern Michigan, we have 160 employees, which range from our Pearson office to our Sheboygan office, including Manistee and Traverse City. Uh, the current contract term uh, became effective on July 1st, 2015, for a 60-month term. We pick up four days a week here in the community. Uh, we also are doing collection of recycling the first and third Thursdays every month with the 18-gallon bin. 
Um, and we recently, the council recently approved and finished construction on a new drop site, uh, which I believe Mr. Taylor will confirm goes into effect next month, beginning of next month. They were hoping to get the uh, bins moved today. I don't know if that okay. happened or not. All right. A little sooner than I thought. So that should be in effect by the end of next week at the latest, but it should be this week, yeah. I'll double check on that tomorrow okay. morning for you. So I'll let you know if that's happened or not. The new site is pretty impressive. Um, if you haven't been there yet, definitely take a drive through. While we're talking about recycling, I spoke with Mr. Taylor earlier this week. Through public services would like to replace the 18 gallon bins with a 96 gallon cart sometime this spring at no additional charge to the city uh, in an effort to help increase the recycling participation by the residents. As part of that change, we will be doing an education campaign to hopefully get more residents participate in that program. Currently, there's 76 residents participating in that program. Um, the Camingo recycling volumes from last year were down about 6%. Uh, some of that comes into packaging changes. Um, I also sit on the board of directors of the Michigan Recycling Coalition, so this is a little passionate item of mine. Um, the recycling in uh, Michigan right now and throughout the country is down commodity values wise. If you know anyone who's into scrap metal, they'll tell you about that process but all commodities for the most part are down. Most of that has to do with generation, and the other has to do with raw goods. As consumable prices come down like oil, which makes our gas really affordable, which I appreciate, it also has a negative impact on the classic markets as it relates to recycling. Um, as we all know, newsprint and magazine subscription paper is down, so all of those things kind of trend out. If you'd ever like more information on it, I'd be more than happy to send each and one of you uh, a presentation on that. The average residential recycle tonnage, or the refuse tonnage, is pretty consistent. Uh, there's actually an error in that number. It should be 211 instead of 206 for the 2015. So you went from 206 tons to 211. The program's been in place now since last July. Um, has had a, a few minor hiccups here and there, but for the most part, runs pretty well. Uh, Mr. Taylor confirmed that the council did approve the budget amount for spring cleanup if you guys choose at a later point in time during 2016 to have that, you do have that budget fund available still. And that leaves me to your questions. Nice, short, and sweet, the way you like it. On the bulk, are you are they finding that our residents are abiding to what constitutes a bulk, not putting things out there that they really shouldn't be? Do we need to do an education or are things, as you say, working? I uh, guess some bumps out of the way. Yep. Like I said, yeah, the, for the most part, bulk, bulk service is a, a learning curve process. Mm -hmm. uh, residents that do have an issue with it get a visit from one of our rough supervisors. Mm -hmm. um, they typically either talk with that individual or tag the item so that when the individual comes home, they give us a call. It gives us the opportunity to explain it to them and give them the items that, and the ways that we can rectify it for them. Well, I can tell you firsthand that on Monday, um, I was able to use that service for the first time. I was very happy to see some really ugly chairs go away. <laughs> so I was, I watched for that because I wasn't sure if they were going to take two. There were matching chairs that were, the dog had destroyed basically the cushion zone. But they went away. Yep. So I was happy about that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. What are some of the things you would take? On the bulk item, it, it ranges anything from a mattress to a chair to a couch. It goes all the way down to a microwave, <coughs> uh, for example. So. The things that we don't take are uh, 12 foot rolls of carpet. You'd have to cut the carpet into manageable strips. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that there's a list on your website. If there's not, I can update that information so that there is one. We could always call your office, correct, if That's there is correct. a question? Yep. We'll, we'll make sure that we have an information point that the residents can touch on the city's website or some other form that they can access easily. How would Mr. Taylor solve that? Any other questions? I, I was under the belief when we approved the, the bulk items that we were still going to have the trash haul. We were just going to try to do it in this help soften. Apparently, I misunderstood. 
that it was a replacement. I did never thought that. Uh, you want to help clarify that for us? <laughs> yeah, there's money in the budget to do the 2016 spring crash all and council was going to reevaluate that as part of the 2017 budget and see if spring crash all needed to continue. So it hasn't been discontinued. In fact, we've been telling residents that 2016 probably is going to happen. But as part of the upcoming budget, you'll be able to decide if well enough that you might be able to discontinue spring crash all moving forward. Thank you. Did that help you? It did. But I, this is the first I heard that we removed it. I believe we, my belief was when we approved the bulky items, or to go to the bulky items on the first of the month, just to help soften. That was it. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Next, we move on to concerns and comments. Citizen comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment in municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizens and tenants shall be recognized by the mayor for comments, which are limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. So anyone who'd like to comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to officials and staff. City Clerk. Uh, just to let people know, we have absentee ballots available if anybody needs those. Andrew? Yes, just wanted to respond to an email that uh, council received from a citizen on Pine Street talking or asking questions about uh, ordinances for snow removal from sidewalks. The only area that the city requires snow to be removed from sidewalks is in the central business district. That's the only area. So um, just wanted to clear that up. The city does, uh, as time permits, goes goes down the sidewalks and clears it from snow. There was also a question whether the property owners were uh, responsible for what I call the lawn extension between the curb and the sidewalk. And we do have an ordinance that does require them to maintain that. So what I'll either do is I'll either uh, call this gentleman or have him come in and meet and, and uh, see if, you, if those answers are going to be sufficient if you need something. So I just want to let council know that it's being handled. Thank you. So the attorney? Nothing else. Public safety director, anything else? Nothing else, I think. Finance director? Um, yeah, I just want to remind council that on February 13th, there's a Valentine's Day concert at the Ramsdale Theater. It's Marion Peaker, Pico, and the Yonks Cathedral. They're excellent. I encourage everybody to come out and have a nice night. Thanks. Thank you. City engineer? Nothing else. Council member Beaton? I just wanted to add uh, a couple of comments about the letter on the sidewalks because it was a really long letter. It was very thoughtfully written, I thought. Um, and I, I think it is something maybe I would like to at least talk to you about or maybe council would like to visit looking at that ordinance because I think he made some really valid points about the safety issues of people walking on the sidewalks and not walking in the street, especially in the wintertime. So I don't know how we can encourage people to keep their sidewalks clear, but I know that we have, I think it's 10 inches, if your lawn is 10 inches tall, the city will come and cut it in the summertime for you and give you a bill, which I don't really like doing that, but it seems like in the wintertime we should also have something to put that's in place to help encourage people to keep their sidewalks safe. Um, or do more plowing. I'm not sure, but I would like to continue to look at that a little bit. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, sidewalks are double edged sword. You know, we, we go out there, a little snow plow, and we clear them off, and leave a little bit of snow on there, and I go out and walk the dog. But you know, when it gets warm and they kind of thaw a little bit and then it freezes, they get really, really slippery. and. I've been known to fall down, so it's kind of a double. You either take it down the sidewalk, or sometimes it's better to leave it alone. Um, I want to wish Mr. Hornco all, all the luck in his procedures that he's going through. And we're probably all aware that he did fall and break a hip or fractured a hip. I talked to him today on the phone. Um, seems to be in good spirits. He's been up walking around. The way he talked, I doubt that he could go through a metal detector at an airport right now. He has a few screws and some metal in his hip, but. Uh, he sounded, he sounded really good and cheerful. And the way he sounded, he was planning on maybe coming home tomorrow. So that's good news. Thank you. 
Councilmember Smith. Nothing. Thank you to uh, Chief Bachman and his team for uh, meth bust and, and uh, today with the investment um, case to individuals for that. So thank you for keeping Manistee clean. Um, does the DQ Deputy Director have anything? I hear you right at the end. <laughs> <coughs> uh, two items. I just came from the uh, Charter Township of Filer. Uh, <coughs> board meeting and uh, earlier Councilman Smith and I attended the DDA meeting as well um, the purpose for us being there was the sewer agreement that you approved two weeks ago the DDA and the township have an internal agreement that they're working on they're using an old one from the last contract that was developed and they're in the process of updating that so um, they went through that agreement internally but then also went through the agreement that you approved um, my feeling is that they're in consensus of approving it um, and they call the special meeting for next Wednesday I believe it was and they intend to have both groups work through uh, their internal agreement to come to terms with that and once they're comfortable with that intend to approve the sewer agreement with the city so I wanted to give you an update on that the other thing is um, unless the weather changes things we're intending to relocate all the containers for the recycling center over to the new area on, on North Kol Koloszewski tomorrow morning. So that should be up and running. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Will the cameras and everything be operational by tomorrow? The cameras will not be. Uh, we've got everything set in place. Uh, we've got the, um, we have to run a utility a power source into that, but we've got the um, utility agreement laid out uh, we've met with consumers. We have a poll that's, that consumers is donating. We're going to recycle one of their telephone poles for the recycling center. And then they're working, working out the specifics on the camera with the IT, IT department. So that might take a week, week and a half or two, but um, everything else is, will be ready. All the so, signage and, and So everything. are there lights there now, or are you still waiting on the... There's one existing light that is between the, uh, the two parking lots, our recycling center. In the parking lot next door, so it's lit right now. But we're going to add an additional LED light. Jeff, do you know? Do you know if we have any? Maybe Mr. Bachman would know. Are we able to enforce if if somebody dumps a gallon of oil on the ground and we we videotape it? Do we have enforcement powers? Or? Did you feel that big? You get it in here. I believe we do. <laughs> okay. The intention is to have the camera set up. We'll bounce it off the uh, industrial park tower so that signal then comes into our computer system and uh, we're trying to set it up so that Kathy has the ability to look at that camera uh, anytime she needs to so we can detect if there needs to be something cleaned up or when the dumpsters need to be emptied out and then if we have some abuse then we'll be able to go back to the recorded uh, footage and try to find out who the offenders are. I have at times not very many times, but a few times seen oil being down jugs down there. Is, is, is there a possibility of having a place for them to dump oil, or do we even want to get involved in that? Um, I don't think we want to get involved in that, um, but I think that as this facility continues to be used, it may be beneficial for us to add some additional signage, rules, and suggestions. We just had a, a, a lady come in yesterday that has a bag full of batteries that are dead. What do I do with my household batteries? And so I think we can add some literature and probably add some links to the website on how we do the countywide, or we do, we do uh, hazardous material uh, disposal in the city. I believe that's every April. Yeah, it's right before, it's around spring trash. Yep, and then there's also a countywide one that happens, I believe in August, August. out at the County Road Commission. So there's, there's, I think there's some additional educational things that we can do to help people with those questions. I've been down there two or three times and I'm amazed at the, the process of putting in the strips in that fence. Yes. That, I, I finally found out how that was done. I couldn't figure that out. But anyway, it would be a shame to have that all messed up and, and not take some action against those people who are doing that. We need to keep that clean. And, and yep, agreed. Because we had a pile of uh, garbage I last saw night. I saw it tonight, yeah. Anything else, Jeff? Thank you. Thanks for going to the meeting. Uh,
one thing I have is I ask people to be really safe out there. The weather's really supposed to be nasty. The roads are slippery, so just take it easy.